Income tax 2022-2023 lifetime learning credit. Figuring the credit. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from publication 970, Tax Benefits for Education, Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're at the bottom where the credits are located. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement ending at taxable income, similar to the bottom line of a normal income statement, net income. We then calculate the tax on the taxable income, not using one rate or a flat tax, but rather using the progressive tax system to get to the tax before credits and other taxes. Finally, then we're down to where the credits are at, as well as other taxes like self-employment tax. And then we apply the payments, which might be in the form of withholding or estimated tax payments to get to the tax refund or tax due. Also remember that the credits are similar to deductions and that we'd like them both, but if we can get a dollar credit or dollar deduction, we would rather have the credit use support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Usually because we'll usually get the full benefit of the dollar credit as opposed to the dollar deduction, which only reduces the taxable income and our credit, our benefit will be dependent upon the tax rate. Also, the credits down below have a non-refundable portion and a refundable portion. Oftentimes, we break the credits out into non-refundable and refundable. Non-refundable means we can't take the credit liability below zero, meaning we're not going to get a refund if the tax liability goes below zero. The refundable portion means that we can do that, resulting in the tax code being used not as a tax system in that case, but as a welfare or benefit program for that refundable portion of a credit. Figuring the credit, noting that we're looking at the lifetime learning education credit. There's two major education credits, the other one being the American Opportunity Credit. Our thought process generally being one, can I qualify for the education credit? If I cannot, then two, I'm going to default to the second credit, that being the lifetime learning credit, which is our focus here. In other words, the qualifications to be able to get the American Opportunity Credit are more restrictive than the qualifications to be able to get the Lifetime Learning Credit. So now we're figuring the Lifetime Learning Credit. The general assumption is that we couldn't qualify for the American Opportunity Credit. We talked about the American Opportunity Credit in prior presentations. All right, the amount of the Lifetime Learning Credit is 20% of the first $10,000 of qualified education expenses you paid for all eligible students. So we've talked about what does it mean to be an eligible student? What are the education expenses? Once we have the education expenses, that's where we're at now to calculate the credit. And if we take 20% of the 10,000, 10,000 is the cap of those education expenses times 0.2. We have a $2,000 credit, the maximum amount of the credit. Now the American Opportunity Credit, you'll recall, the maximum amount was $2,500. It was also easier to get to that 2,500 maximum amount for the American Opportunity Credit because you only needed basically 4,000 in order to maximize the qualified education expenses to get there. And the things that qualified for the education expenses were a bit more encompassing than what qualifies for the lifetime learning qualified education expenses. So here you got to have a pretty hefty number of the $10,000 qualified education expenses in order to maximize the potential credit at the $2,000. Uh, okay, so the maximum amount of lifetime learning credits you can claim for 2022 is 2,000. That's 20% of 10,000. However, that amount may be reduced based on your MAGI. That's the modified adjusted gross income. 
the income phase out, which is generally not on gross income, but the adjusted gross income with the slight modification, which is usually due to like foreign income uh, type of thing. So it could be lower than that based on the income level. See effect of the amount of your income on amount of credit later. All right, example. Bruce and Tawny are married and file a joint tax return. For 2022, their MAGI, modified AGI, is 75000 So that's below the threshold to basically be phasing out. Tawny is attending a local college, an eligible educational institution, to earn credits toward a degree in nursing. Tawny already has a bachelor's degree in history and wants to become a nurse. In August 2022, Tawny paid $5,000 of qualified education expenses for the fall 2022 semester. Semester, Bruce and Tani can claim a $1,000, which is 20% of that $5,000. Remember, she would have to get up to the $10,000 in order to max out the credit at the $2,000. So, uh, so she's, they get the $1,000 lifetime learning credit on their 2022 joint tax return. So the reason we're not at the maximum of $2,000 in this case is not due to the income threshold, it being phased out because of a higher income, but rather because... Uh, we didn't get to the maximum of 10,000 qualified expenses to maximize the calculation of 20% of that. All right, so form 1098T, to help you figure your lifetime learning credit, the student may receive form 1098T, generally an eligible education institution such as a college or university must send form 1098T. So if you don't get the 1098T, then you want to talk to the college or university. So or acceptable substitute uh, to each enrolled student by January 31st, 2023. So it should get their first month of the following tax year. So an institution will report payments received box one for qualified education expenses. However, the amount on form 1098T might be different from what you paid. When figuring the credit, use only the amounts you paid or are deemed to have paid in 2022 for qualified education expenses. In other words, the 1098T is a pretty good reference and it should hopefully be accurate, you know, for most people in terms of what you have paid. But we've talked about what qualifies as education expenses in prior presentations and the 1098T might not pick up or exactly uh, pick up all the different qualification components. The reason the IRS wants to make sure that a 1098T is given isn't solely so you can tie into that number as is the case for other kind of documentation like a W-2, where if you don't tie into the number, you will almost surely get an audit kind of situation. But, but the 1098-T can still verify to the IRS that if you're claiming the credit, at least they can verify that you attended uh, some kind of qualifying you know, institution, even if the number on the 1098-T is not exactly what was used to calculate uh, the credit. So in addition, Form 1098-T should give other information for that institution, such as adjustments made for prior years, the amount of scholarship or grants. So that'll help you to see if you need to de decrease the amount by the grants, if that was free money. We talked about that in prior presentation, reimbursements, refunds, and, uh, and whether their student was enrolled at least half time, which is another requirement generally for the American Opportunity Credit which has diff a bit different rules in that case than the lifetime learning credit or was a graduate student. So the eligible educational institution may ask for a completed form W9S. So you have to give them the information so that they can populate the form 1098T, the W9S like a W4 in essence when you're an employee is a request for that information or similar statement to attain the student's name, address and taxpayer identification number. Effect of the amount of your income on the amount of your credit. The amount of your lifetime learning credit is phased out, gradually reduced if your MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income, is between 80,000 and 90,000. So these are the numbers that you kind of want to keep in mind if you're like giving advice or talking about these credits. You got to say, well, it's going to start phasing out uh, 80 and 90,000. It's going to be 160,000 and 180,000 if you file a, a joint return. And obviously one way to kind of think about that is that, you know, you would think it would be doubled for a joint return, which in this case it is, right? Because you'd have two people together. So you think their income could possibly be doubled. So if it's 80,000, we're going to 160, 90,000, we're going to 180.
So you can't claim a lifetime learning credit if your MAGI is 90,000 or more or 180,000 or more if you file a joint uh, return. So modified adjusted gross income, what does that mean? That's gonna be the phase out number that's used, not the gross income, but the AGI and then the modified AGI. So for most taxpayers, the MAGI, the modified adjusted gross income is adjusted gross income the same as AGI. In other words, as figured on their federal income tax return. MAGI when using form 1040 or 1040 SR, if you file form 1040 or 1040 SR, your MAGI is the AGI on line 11 of that form modified by adding back if any of these apply and tax software would help you know to calculate these oftentimes one foreign earned income exclusion two foreign household exclusion three foreign household deduction for exclusion of income by bona fide residents of american samoa and five exclusion of income by bona fide residents of puerto rico example you are filing a joint return with an MAGI of 161,000 in 2022. You paid 6,600 of qualified education expenses. You figure the tentative lifetime learning credit, which is a uh, 20% of the first 10,000 of qualified education expenses you paid for all eligible students. So the result is a 6,600 is what was paid, which is under the 10,000. Therefore, the credit before we get into any phase outs, it's not at the 2,000, but rather at the 1,320 tentative credit. And then because your MAGI, your modified adjusted gross income is within the range of income where the credit must be reduced, you must multiply your tentative credit, 1,320 by a fraction, the numerator top part of the fraction is 180,000, the upper limit of those filing a joint return minus the modified AGI. The denominator bottom part is 20,000, uh, is 20,000, the range of income for phase out 160,000 to 180,000. The result is the amount of your phase out. So we probably don't need to know this calculation because software will help with this calculation and then you can kind of deconstruct from the software. What we need to know is to be able to say and talk to people intelligently about, well, now if your income goes above a certain threshold, it's going to phase out. So if you can't get the American Opportunity Credit, then you might take the Lifetime Learning Credit. Although it takes more expenses to maximize out the credit, you would need $10,000 instead of $4,000 to get the maximum credit amount of $2,000 instead of $2,500. And there's an income phase out which will basically start and then phase completely out. It phases out fairly quickly after you hit that basically uh, income threshold.